Hi folks, and welcome to another training segment for the Auto Body Repair Network, the Automotive Training Institute, and of course, the Automotive Management Institute. Today, our presentation is going to be on organizational skills and time management. And uh, it's funny as we go through these different segments that we um, realize that they're kind of intertwined and that's the way the presentation is going to kind of show you the expectations and all that are considered in this. So as we look at this, just an overview of what we're going to talk about. Does everything go as planned and in the time frame that you have it identified to be uh, completed in? If not, this presentation will help you organize, organize your processes and develop timetables for process implementation that will help keep workflow and customer service on track. Team organization and uh, execution through setting expectations and developing processes is going to be the key to your success. So with that being said, my name is Keith Manich. I am the vice president. I have the responsibilities for the collision division at ATI. Those are my contact uh, information here, both the phone number and the uh, email address. And I will show you those at the end of our presentation as well. So organizing to set the pace. This is really a, um, an issue that folks sometimes um, have kind of concerns with, but setting the pace, organizing your workplace to manage it more efficiently your communication skills must be at a level where setting expectations and then the follow-up that you uh, do to make sure that it's being done, that has to be second nature. So this is about leadership. It's about organizational skills. In the prior presentations that we've done, we've talked about um, all the leadership skills and so on, but now we're going to talk about implementation. And that's really kind of where the rubber meets the road here. But we've got to establish process steps. But more importantly, we've got to commit to following them. And that's really the hardest part when you're trying to organize your time and the time management, and you're trying to organize the things that your folks are doing is there are going to be things that kind of influence those transactions that need to take place. And we're going to talk about how we can avoid some of those as we go through this. But we need to make lists. We talk about task lists quite a bit here, but those things, those are the things that identify what needs to get done. And then once we've identified what needs to get done, then we've got to put the performance metrics and set that expectation. When does it have to be done? We want to be able to create a vision of what it looks like. We have to communicate that in clear objectives so that as we're providing this information to our folks, they understand that this is a very clear line of communication that needs to be followed. It's about being, and I and everybody that takes training with me laughs because I talk about three things all the time. You've got to be consistent. You've got to have repeatable processes, things that we know can be done each time that we're going through any of the processes we have in our business. But then most importantly, and this goes back to the leadership discipline. We've got to make sure that we're following through on things that we're asking our folks to do. So I'm going to go through some definitions real quick um, because these are really important to what we're going to talk about. But a task, it's a piece of work to be done or undertaken, a job, duty, chore, charge, labor, but it's a piece of our business. So the task is really important because this is what we're going to be asking people to accomplish. And then we look at the organization itself. So an organized body of people with a particular purpose. In our case, it's going to be our business. So again, really important um, uh, definitions that we have to understand and follow. Then, of course, the one that we're talking about most definitively today is time management. And again, if we look at the definition, it really talks about what we need to know in our business, but that's the ability to use one's time effectively or looking at it from a productivity perspective, 
are we going to be able to produce the amount of work that we have identified for either ourselves or our team? So as we look at organization, and you'll see it with the red circle around it there, this is building a process of the organization from start to finish. We're trying to develop that consistent work plan. We've got to have commitment not only from the management, but we've got to have commitment from the team. And we're going to talk about how we make that happen. But between the two, we develop our roadmap to complete all the things that are required for the business. So we've got to have accountability, but included in that accountability is best practices, because that's what's going to help us get through our daily activities. So how do we make this all happen? We start by establishing goals. Um, these are the things that the team is going to need. And so we're establishing what the team needs to do. These are the things that they have to complete. So what has to be done, when it has to be done, how it needs to be done. So that we're going to put some specific twists in there that are required to make sure that we're getting everything done um, the way it needs to be done. And then, of course, at the bottom, the last bullet there is really important. We have to establish perform, uh, performance metrics and then the accountability for each of the individuals that's gonna work uh, within the process. Then we go to expectations. So we've got to set expectations. So we're identifying essentially what the performance requirement is. You can make this as specific as you want, but we're, we're looking at things like taking all those tasks that we talk about and maybe putting them in order of importance so that we make sure that we're gonna get them all done. We're going to also establish timing. When do those goals have to be met? And then each team member's responsibilities. Again, let's go back to the team uh, members. We've given them tasks. Now we've given them or set their expectations. We have goals that they have to meet and a time frame in which we have to meet them. But also included in this, as you go to the next bullet, is the team leader. And that's really what we're going to focus on. The team leader has to be organized so that they can lead the team to meet all the expectations that we've identified. So what, what do we do to make that happen? We solicit team input on how to set those expectations. Why do we do that? If the team comes together and they develop what the accountabilities are, they are more prone to want to meet the accountabilities because it's really easy at that point for the leader to say, hey, you folks, you know, you came in, you helped me develop this. We know what the expectations are. You helped me develop um, them. Why aren't we meeting them? So it really helps us to build that rapport between the leader and the team. So as we go through that, then we develop our process uh, development. As we go through that, Accountability requires all the, the entire team, including the leader, to pull in the same direction. Overarching business plans include all the steps that are, are key to the success of the team. This allows the participants to observe uh, all the requirements they will need to meet. And, and more importantly, what's the order of completion so that we can build the, the, uh, the most crisp process that we can? So one of the things that we've talked about in, in prior uh, presentations are current and future uh, state process maps. Those will help you in identifying some of the um, areas that we've got to put in a specific order to make sure that we're going to meet all the uh, operational objectives of whatever we're trying to build. Then the next thing is execution. So we're going to establish um, the process and how it's to be executed. Um, if we don't execute it according to our plan, the chances of us having missteps um, are, are pretty high. So this is where the time management um, will be necessary to ensure that everyone who's participating in this process can meet those performance objectives. So again, real important things as we go through our, our team leader and team member roles, we've got to set these tasks up so that they're timed to meet all the obligations. 
Now, you know, we've got cycle time, we've got paint booth time, we've got, you know, are we servicing the customer in the right time frame? Are we turning over the vehicles in the time frame that um, we expect to, to do uh, for the amount of work that is required to fix the car? So keeping everyone on task is going to be the team leader's role. So as you see that as a responsibility, we've got to communicate with the team, but that team leader has to be on point. That's why time management is so important for that. So if we're setting the example of what we're going to try and do, do you have a plan? So what's your plan? Are you organized? Do you have a task list? And this includes for yourself. You need to know what you're going to do in what order you're going to do it so that you can follow your own processes so that now you can clearly set expectations. Real important for the leader, we've got to validate that things are getting done. What's your uh, daily schedule? Do you have time? Um, not only do you have time to get everything done, but do you have it set in blocks of time so that you can ensure that all your responsibilities are met during the day? Then of course, the big question is what gets in the way? We always know that as a leader, you're gonna be putting out fires, but can we build some of that firefighting into your daily schedule? Then for the, the one question that everybody always has, what do I do when I have stuff left over at the end of the day? Well, we go back and we look at, was my day scheduled properly or was I putting out a fire that took too long? Now I had to maybe carry something into the next day and readjust the next day. So we're going to talk about all those things as we go in, but let's talk about what's the plan. When things are left to chance, employees kind of feel that they can do what they feel is right at, at any given moment. That's what we want to avoid. We want to make sure that the things that they're doing align with the company vision. So how can we make this happen? If we don't set expectations properly, folks are going to do what they want to do because they don't feel that there's any um, you know, recourse in the event that they did something the way they wanted to and it wasn't the way the company wanted it done. If we didn't organize their thoughts and how do I organize someone else's thoughts? I set it in a standard operating procedure. I set it in a process. I set the expectations. I get them to buy in. That helps build when we get to the point of getting process compliance. When does, the, when does this really go crazy? When the team leader is disorganized. If the team leader is disorganized, everyone else is gonna look at that and say, why do I need to be organized? So, the last one here is an important one. We call it outside interventions. These are the things that are shot in during the day that we don't count on. So we're gonna have to learn how to work through those as well. So step one in this is, let's start simple. You've gotta set the example. So as a leader, I've gotta make sure that I'm organized. So I always carry a pad of paper with me or a notebook or something that as I'm going through and I see something that's either disorganized or not working the way we're, we want it to, or I'm observing something or I'm witnessing something that's not done right, I write it down. That way I put it in memory and then I can come back to it and say, all right, what did I see here and what did I think was causing the issue? I'm going to list my tasks so that they can be accomplished. Or if it's a process that I see that maybe that needs to be adjusted, I'm going to write that down too. Once they're listed, I'm going to place everything in rank order. So I may have something that really uh, has a heavier weight than others. That may be the task I want to accomplish first. Then I'm going to establish the who, what, where, when, all relative to completion of the task. So typically we're going to see this in things like a job description. Then I'm gonna look at that time frame for completion because I need that performance met, uh, metric as a measurement so that I can see what's being done and make sure that it's being done the way it needs to be done for us to meet the obligations of whatever the process is. Then I've gotta look at my employees, how are they doing? I have to observe the team. 
Um, are they doing it the way they should be? Is it benefiting the business? Is it the best use of their time? Is it being completed in that rank order that we have it set up in? Are we measuring for effectiveness? I can't just say, go do this and then not give feedback. The feedback is the important part because it's either going to be, it'll be positive, sometimes be negative. I want to reward positive behavior, but I've got to correct behavior that's not uh, in the best interest of the business. Then I have to look at, you know, are, are folks doing too much or too little? I've got to have some individual uh, incremental measurements so I know how my folks are performing. If they're performing well, I want to congratulate them and we keep going. If they're not, I've got to, you know, kind of offer up, is there anything I can help you um, to do to uh, correct or to make corrective action? So do they have enough time to complete their tasks? That's a really important one. And then if not, why not? So I, I will tell you something that's seen quite a bit in management is we bring somebody into a job position, we give them a job description, and all of a sudden the job description starts to grow. But that's not what we hired that person to do. Maybe I gave them 10 job tasks when they were hired, but now they've got 20. And then the the, the uh, employee comes to you and they says, you know, hey, listen, I can't get this stuff done. And then we, we say to the employee, well, you're not performing well enough, but they're doing 10 additional tasks than they were asked to do to begin with. We've got to manage that time. We've got to manage and understand that if we're going to have, give people more things to do, we've got to also establish with them a new expectation. So as we look at the performance, are they meeting their task requirements? Um, following the production or the office work plan, if we've given them standard operating procedures, we've given them all those things to do, are they meeting the accountabilities? If they aren't, then of course, that's a one-on-one -on -one discussion with them about improving. And then their, their performance measurements, there's a couple of things that happen with these. We have to look at employee engagement. Are they really engaged? Do they feel good about the job? Do they feel good about what they're doing? Do they feel good about management? I'll tell you something that um, I learned in some training I took, and that's that employees typically don't leave a company. They leave managers. Um, and they leave because there's just a lack of communication or a lack of understanding about the expectations or how the expectations were set. So we've got to be pretty sensitive to that because we are the ones that need to be looking at how we're doing. And so employee engagement kind of tells us that, you know, am I organized? Is my work day organized so that people don't see me running around like I'm on fire trying to put the fire out? Are you a doer or are you a procrastinator? Because if you wait till the last minute, people are going to see that because you tend to get a little nervous about things when, oh man, I'd let everything go to the last part of the day. And now I don't know if I'm gonna get it all done. That's typically where people make mistakes. How often are you validating employee performance? Are you doing it once a week, once a month, once a day? That's really important. You don't wanna be the, the helicopter manager where you're watching them all the time. You've gotta give them an opportunity to do on their own but they do on their own when expectations are set properly and we give them everything in an order that's easy to understand and easy to follow. So do you have one-on-ones with your staff? Do you sit down and talk to them about, you know, it, can it be 10 minutes, 15 minutes, a half hour? Once a week, sit down, how are you doing? How's your job going? Is there anything I can help you with? And let them kind of tell you how things are going. That's what one-on-ones are good for. Also, if the person has a performance issue, that's the time when we have that discussion. But we've got to be measuring not only the team, but we've got to measure uh, the individual performance as well. And so as we're doing and going through this process, it allows us to really identify, first, we're, we're taking time to meet with our employees. They're saying, wow, they're taking time to meet with me. And the meetings are positive. Sometimes they're not going to be, but they're saying, wow, they're taking time out of a busy day to come and share with me that I'm doing good. 
That's a, that's a real positive thing for our employees. Then are you communicating the results? We need to have some way to communicate to the employees that, you know, they're either doing good or bad and not as an individual, but let's put a team board up. Let's put a status board and let them um, see how they're doing where they can just walk by and glance at it, say, wow. Or in the morning meetings, I can say, hey, look at this is how we're doing against our objectives. And then the last thing, you know, specifically about management is, do you feel overwhelmed? Because if you do, there's probably going to be the, the, the feeling by your, uh, your team that you are overwhelmed. So there may be times when you have to delegate some responsibilities so that doesn't occur. So the next thing we're going to look at is timing. Um, choice, judgment, control of when something should be done. We've got to make sure that we are setting those expectations. So have the tasks been completely or created and then completely identified? And I mean, soup to nuts, a, a explanation of what's gotta be done because you can't measure or you can't manage what, you, what you're not measuring. If I'm having a problem with the results, why did it get to that point? I didn't measure it properly and now I can't manage it. So you've gotta have time frames for uh, that, are set for the performance to be established. So you can't hold them accountable for um, guidelines or performance that you haven't shared with them. So as a manager, these are all things I've got to go through in, in before I present things to the team. Did we think through everything that's gonna to have to be done? Then the next bullet is a really important one. Are you conducting team meetings? Um, for the most collision shops, there's at least two team meetings a day. Some will do three where management meets together. Then you go out to your production staff and the production staff is typically a morning meeting and an early afternoon meeting. And the early morning meeting is we're gonna um, you know, give everybody their job assignments. The early afternoon meeting is typically gonna be, is there anything you need so we can get everything that was on schedule for today out the door today so that we can establish our timeframes. And then, of course, the last one there is the one-on-ones. And those individual meetings are for whether it's going to be positive or negative, whatever it might be, but it allows the, uh, our employees to, or our, our team, because that's really, I don't want to look at people as employees. I want to look at them as part of my team. And I'm managing a team of individuals. And that team, I want them to think about the success. However, it takes one-on-ones to make sure each of the individuals are working in a team atmosphere. So let's, let's go back to what we talked about earlier because I think this is really important, but what is each team member supposed to do? So it's a bunch of different tasks, but where do those tasks, where are they reflected in, in um, kind of the hierarchy of what we're doing in the shop? Job descriptions. We've got to make sure that our folks have job descriptions if we're going to hold them accountable. So the job description, basically, I'm taking this task list here, and this is another one here. This was production management, um, and this one is just a, a blank sheet. And I'm saying, okay, here's what you're supposed to do. Then the job description says when you're supposed to do it. Do they know their role in the success of the business? If they don't, Boy, that's an opportunity. You can spend time with folks and really make sure that they understand just how influential they are in the success of the business. You've got to take time to ensure that they know what they're accountable for, that the tasks are ranked in order of importance, that um, the task completion, and, and I would share this with the team, you're going to be measured on these accountabilities because this is what we base your wages on, any kind of performance um, bonuses that you may get, how we develop enough uh, of the financials to give you things like paid time off and things like that. They need to understand that this is what this is all kind of all encompassing in the financials to help build a, a better business. And then of course, if the tasks aren't completed, 
you know, what are we going to do? Are there repercussions? You know, those kinds of discussions that we would have with our individuals. But so we'll have a task list. We'll know um, what the status of the tasks are, um, the level of importance of the tasks, how many are, are, are completed. And then, you know, if things aren't completed, when are we going to see those things completed so that we can move forward? So it's about time management. Remember, we already talked about what's your plan, are you organized, and so on. But time is a precious commodity when we're dealing. You only have eight hours in the day. And we've got a specific time frame we're looking at to get the car completed. So time becomes a precious commodity. It has to be managed. Establishing the priorities and setting expectations, that's what leads to success of the business. Each task needs to have a time frame for completion. We need to set those expectations, which essentially is performance metrics. If we say we know how the estimate has to be written, we've got to convert 70% of the estimates to make sure that we can cover all the bills for the shop. Those are the things that, that you need to explain as a team leader. Then the measurements and follow-up um, should be done to ensure the expectations are met. That's all that is, is an audit. And everybody hates when you say audit, but it's a review. We're just reviewing all those things that we've set the expectations on to make sure that it's being done the way that we set um, the expectations for performance out and, and basically told the folks this is what we need done. I put a couple simple ones up here so you can kind of see how this works, but you know, things as simple as in our, in our offices, how do we set up our filing system? You know, organization means you're making sure that the time spent on anything you do moves your team towards the goal. So in here, this is telling me, you know, for the week, uh, this first week, this is what we're doing. This is how many openings we have for the the next week. We've got so many openings, and it tells us whether they're open jobs, whether we've got the customer scheduled in to drop off, or we've got non-drivables, which are the red ones, but they need to know what's coming next. And so they can look up on the board, even if they're, you know, technical folks, they can pretty much see what's happening by what they see on the board. You know, they're going to be worried about what the next jobs are that are coming in. Um, obviously, if we've got flat rate folks are going to be worried about that. So, one of the things we don't want to do with this is waste time. So visual indicators work really well for us here. Then setting up your, your file so that we know what's going to happen next in our process. Remember, we said we're going to look at setting goals and identifying the hierarchy of when those things should be done. So whether it's on a wall, whether it's in file drawers, wherever you organize this, it's easy to read, easy to see and easy for people to say, okay, we know what's coming next. Then we look at something that um, if you've never used one of these, these are very important to keeping your team organized. And I'll share, you know, that's gonna be the same thing for um, the leader as well, but time management logs. You know, they're, they're there to assist in keeping both the managers and the employees on track. It helps to ensure that the activities are in rank order. That's where we come over here, goal one, two, three, um, through six. We're gonna say when these have to get started, when they should be finished. We'll look at the actual time that was spent. We're gonna look at what the activity was, what priority it was. Did it, uh, did the plan, you know, did it move forward the way it should have? And then any notes that may be there for um, anything that happened during the process. But this helps keep people organized. It helps us organize our activities. So remember what we talked about, time management and organizational skills. This is one of the things that will help us keep uh, on, on task. So the goals are established for each day following the key metrics the employees responsible to meet. So we're doing things that help keep everyone organized. So we're gonna organize our workflow. Really, that is a significant goal in what we're doing here. Once all the tasks are identified, make sure the right person um, is handling role relevant tasks. Re key important uh, importance here. We need to make sure that 
as we're assigning work out to our employees, that those employees understand that these are things that they are tasked with because they are the best one for the job. That makes them feel better about what they're trying to accomplish. We, we're making sure that they're properly aligned with the activities that we've assigned to them. Creating a process makes, uh, make, makes this process, um, you know, we can look at the big picture. It helps us look at, okay, are there any potential roadblocks in what we're doing? And if there aren't roadblocks in what we're doing, we should be able to come through this without uh, any problem whatsoever. If a roadblock does exist, then we've got to look at, all right, what's our current work around? Then how do we avoid that from happening in the future? Talk with the staff, make sure that anything, critical in infrastructure needs, materials, make sure all of those things are in place so that they don't run into any potential changes um, in the process, because that, that creates waste and we want to eliminate waste. Conducting the team meetings is, is hugely important. If, if you're not doing that in managing time and managing your team's time, having them understand completely the things that, that um, they're required to do and what's required, maybe you say, we need two and a half closures a day or three cars a day that have to go through the store. Everybody's got the target now. We know what has to go through the booth. We know what has to go through um, body or, or structure. We know what's got to be prepared. All of those things are identified just by coming up with that one common denominator of three cars have to make it through the store each day. That gives us 15 cars a week. We know what that's going to give um, the store as far as the financials go. So it's a great way for us in step two to make sure that we're um, providing the information to our folks. One of the things that's really important as a leader, you've got to learn how to coach other people. So practicing what we call active listening skills is hugely important. You need to be attentive. Ask open-ended questions. I don't want to ask somebody something that's just yes or no. I want them to give me feedback. So these are what we call probing questions. If, in fact, you don't understand what someone said to you, request clarification. If what they clarify still you don't get it, paraphrase it back and say, is this what you meant by that? So we want to be attuned to uh, and reflect feelings. We want to make sure, and again, this goes back to looking at employee engagement. Employee engagement basically um, is they're telling you or they're telling management how they feel about working with you or working for you. Then we get to the last one. It, it's We want to summarize. If in fact we went through a bunch of things, listen, in summary, I just want to go over these things with you to make sure everybody is on the same page. Get feedback from the team about the effectiveness of the workflow. If you do that, that will allow you to build these consistent processes we talk about. Then we have a constant level of performance. We can build predictability into the modeling for what goes through the store and you know, what we can plan on the store making. So again, it's a huge undertaking for us that we've got to handle uh, you know, our responsibility is to identify what needs to be done. So as, as the leaders, we have to set up those timeframes for action. We're going to train people to make sure that they can meet the accountabilities. They need to know what the target dates for completion are. Um, and it may not just be about that vehicle. It may be about other things, routine maintenance, safety training, other things that need to be done in the store as well. Then what are the instructions if they're necessary to be given? How do we give them? How do we set that expectation? If there's training required, jump over to the left side of the screen there. Training helps us with a lot of different things. It's about skills, it's about knowledge, it's about learning, it's about ability. It's about getting a person from maybe a C level to a B level to an A level over time. But 
it's all those things that are going to be required to help the team grow. What will you do in, in a support role to help them achieve the goal? Hey, the best thing you can do, provide them with information, set the expectations, measure to make sure that they're performing, give them constant feedback. Those are the things that are really important to the team. Be prepared to coach them through the processes like the previous slide. You may need to jump in. You may need to help if the situation requires. What does that do? It shows that you're part of the team. And they know that, listen, if we get into a real crunch and we ask for it, we can get help. Just be careful. Don't always jump in and do it because then it makes people feel like that's part of your uh, job accountability when it's really theirs. But if you're needed, sure, it's good to do that. Now, for, for you as an individual, uh, as a leader, you got to be prepared to lead the team. Use tools that allow you to remain organized. That's the only way you're going to get your team organized. Everything organizationally um, that you do or you're asking them to do, you need to be doing those yourself. Maybe not in the same tasks, but at least in the accountabilities, the metrics, the things that you need to do for performing so that you are an example. You want to ensure that processes, again, are consistent and repeatable. And of course, my, my best one there is that it takes discipline. I, I will tell you, most folks that really get off track with leading the team, it's because they don't have the discipline to be consistent with what they're doing. So start simple, then expand your work list, expand the time frames as you go. You'll be able to, it, it's like uh, if anybody ever read, read the book, you know, Eating an Elephant. It, it's, it's one of those things. I know that's pretty <laughs> gross, but you got to take it one bite at a time. If you go after a big chunk, it's going to take longer to chew. It just doesn't happen as quick. So take it in small chunks and allow yourself to succeed and make sure that your team is succeeding. So there is time management for, for the leader as well. So create your own time management log. I mean, we're going to share this with our folks and say, okay, how do we get all the things that are on your task list completed? There's going to be critical steps that you're going to need to accomplish during the day. Make sure that at the end of the day, you have met those objectives that you set for yourself. Again, set them up in priority order so that you can ensure their completion. It, it's not always about getting everything done. It's getting everything done with the quality you need to move it forward into the next day. So again, setting things up in priority order so that you can ensure their completion and the proper methodology is used. That's going to require you to set timetables for the performance. Um, I, I can tell you personally, there are certain things I do at certain times of the day because I know I'll have either a low, typically have a low phone volume at that point, or maybe I don't have coaching calls to do. That's when I set time to do certain things like reviewing coaching calls that my staff is doing. So as I manage them, I'm listening to what they're doing in meeting expectations with others. It's kind of the same thing we're doing here. You're setting a repair expectation on the vehicle, and all you're doing is verifying that your folks are meeting those expectations. The next bullet's the important one. Monitor the length of time for each performance area um, for yourself and make sure that you're sticking to your plan. You have to adjust time frames if you do. That's okay. Um, but then we want to rethink how we had things scheduled. So if I know I'm in the shop and I'm looking at my uh, accounts receivable process and I know it's going to take me, oh, about an hour a day to do that, what time am I going to do it so that I get the least amount of disruptions when I'm going through that process? Because that's the shop's money that's out on the street. So do I have a time frame set for that? And am I able to meet that accountability each day? I may tell my folks, listen, when I'm sitting at my desk from nine to 10, don't bother me because that's when I'm looking at this. 
And that's fine because we've set the expectation. I go in there and I do that. Everybody gets kind of uh, in tune to what you're doing and they understand that that's a priority. Measure how well you did in keeping to your plan. So as you set all of this up, you've got priorities, A, B, C, and then of course, urgent. Um, if you're a manager and the owner has something that gets done, those always become urgent. Um, if you're an owner uh, and you feel that you've got the potential of losing a customer, that might be urgent. But we want to make sure that we're identifying the goals that we've, we're uh, establishing for not only our team, but for ourselves and identifying the importance of each of those in rank order. Then it's pretty easy to follow um, at that point. So again, pretty important stuff for us to keep ourselves organized, then to allow us to make sure that our team is organized as well. I, I really like setting a calendar up. I typically put things, and this is personal, but I typically put everything in, um, in my Outlook files and I can set alarms and say, okay, I know that I've got to do this particular thing at this particular time. It allows me at one glance to see what's set up for that day. Now, you know, you may have some things that are a little different in your store. We just have to figure out how to accommodate what your tasks are into your uh, schedule. So again, the time management log, things you need to think about, what are your goals for the day? What priority ranking do each of those goals have? Is there a time frame for completion? And then are any of those goals shared with the team? Maybe you should do that. Maybe as you're doing one-on-ones, share the individual goals that you have and why you do them and what it means to the team. And then, you know, hey, Johnny, Joe, or Mary, whoever the person is that you're speaking with, you say to them, look, this is what your work means to the team. This is what my work means to the team. Really important because they're getting the feeling that they're part of this team process with you. Organizing work time for us, this is a challenge for every manager, every team leader, because we've, we've got lots of obligations that we have to meet, but setting up so that we can kind of help each other meet all those different obligations, that's our role as a leader. That's our role as a manager. So you'll need to get back on track. If you, if you lose sight for a minute, okay, we, we had that emergency, but now I got to get back on track. So what do I need to do to make sure that I'm doing things as I'm supposed to do as quickly as possible? Make note of any exceptions that you have. And, and there's a really important point that's made here is if you have an exception, if it's a one-off and it only happens one time, okay, I can deal with that. And it's something I'm going to deal with, you know, as a one-time situation. If you see that occurring more frequently, I got a process problem because I'm not doing something right that's allowing that interference into the process. So make note of the exception. How did it take you away from the plan? And how can I avoid it in the future? Was it a result of somebody else not meeting their responsibilities? That's something I can handle individually with them. If so, it's a great point for uh, two discussions. One is going to be, I'm going to talk to that person individually, but then I'm going to talk to the team, kind of the overarching uh, result of that thing happening so that they understand that they don't want it to occur either. All the members of the team need to execute their roles and be measured on their individual performances. If they aren't meeting their accountabilities, again, the one-on-one -on -one meetings are there for that. That's an individual coaching conversation that you're gonna have with them. But all of this, all of this goes into our setting up what our time management has to look like and organizing ourselves. So again, on the, the management checklists, we, got it, we have to identify what will be taking place, what priority level you have assigned to it, and then share that. 
what time are you going to start your activity? What time will you end your activity? So if I know I've got certain things, maybe I've got to do customer call outs or maybe I'm talking to a rental car agency or something. I can pretty much guess what my time frame for that is going to be. And I can put that in order so that I know, okay, I, I've got to get this done at a certain time so I can be done by a certain time. And as you start to do that more consistently, you're, it's going to become second nature to you. Then, uh, important thing is, was it a pre-planned activity? So if you've got it all set up and everything's going like clockwork, that's great. But what happens if something jumps in there um, for whatever reason, that's not part of your, what you've set up for that day? You know, is it something you've got to plan for in the future? Or like I said before, is it a one-off? It's a one-off, okay, we just deal with it and go on. If it's something that we see is reoccurring, we've got to put that into our action plan as well. All important, we've got to have notes. We've got to make sure that we're making comments on documentation. And then of course, we're providing those results out. These are the things that'll keep continuity between the leader and the team. If we do that, organizing and, and meeting time management goals are, are much easier to do. So creating a goal list. We want to be smart. Write your goal down. We want to be specific. It's got to be measurable. It's got to be achievable. Um, it's got to be relevant to what you're doing. And it's got to be time focused. Those, those uh, looking at smart, the way it's, it's listed there, is hugely important to what you're doing. So break down, look at your action plans, outline them, make sure that everything that you need to accomplish is set up in your action plan. Make sure that as you go through these processes, things are scheduled. If, if you don't schedule things, you're kind of you know, hit and miss um, and the results typically will be hit and miss as well. Then of course, tracking your, your progress, continually monitor progress. If you do that, you'll know that your time management style that you've chosen and your organizational skills are working. If you find out that you've laid out a plan and you're not able to keep to it, something's gotta be adjusted in the plan. So sticking to your goals and the checklist, you need to motivate yourself. So how do I know, how do I keep myself motivated? When I motivate my team, that motivates me. And so focus. We've got to focus on what we're doing. We've got to define clear, specific goals. And, and I put in here that must be reached. Because if we don't reach them, we're not meeting the obligations for uh, the business that we're running. Set clear performance expectations for the, both the team members and yourself. Think about the process, not the result. If we follow all the uh, processes the way we should, the results come naturally. If we're focusing only on the result, we're missing the processes. And typically we'll have a problem in meeting the obligation. If you have process compliance, the goal will typically be met. And that's the same thing for the financials. If we're meeting all the expectations in our S&Ps and all those things, typically the financials follow. Ensure that not only your Process steps are followed, but validate that the team members are doing the same. Make sure that their obligations are being um, followed as well. Hold yourself accountable. You do that by just doing a checkoff list. Complete your worksheet daily. Make sure that you're, and this could be something you might take and, and build your worksheet once, and it's the same thing you do every day. That's fine. Just make sure you're checking it off every day. It will get to the point where this all becomes second nature. But it takes time, but once you've used it and you're used to using it, it'll become a habit. Once it becomes a habit, much easier to execute. Create a long-term work calendar. This will help you in, in um, ensuring that the upcoming events are factored into your workflow. So if, if I know over the next month, I've got all these things to do, like I, I, I'll just give you an, again an example of myself. I know I teach classes every month uh, for the entire year. Those are automatically put into my schedule at the beginning of the year. Then if I have other things that I've got to do, they, uh, those things are done around this, 
pre-existing schedule for, for my class, um, you know, when I teach classes. So I make sure that I've identified those tasks. Maybe I've got to um, revise classware and things like that. All that stuff is done around the, uh, the training because I've kind of, um, you know, put that on myself that that's the process that I'm going to follow. And it works, it, for me, it works very well. So as you go through all of this, you've, you've spent a lot of time, you've looked at all the things that have to get done, you're working with your team, you have to share the vision. Sharing the vision is probably the most important thing that you have to do. Again, we can call it expectations, the vision. Um, I'm, I'm looking at the, the business itself, what are we saying the vision for the business is? But update, communicate, and recognize. Those are three really important things that we need to do. Share the results so that we're fully transparent. So the good and the bad. I want everybody on the team to understand how the team is doing. Allow the team to have input when decisions are being made. Some, some folks will say, oh, you know what, Keith, I really don't have to do that. Well, you don't, but you get much more buy-in from the team when you do. Be sure to follow up on their use of time management logs once you've put them into use. Why do I do that? I want to get everybody working in the same direction. Remember, we're all pulling in the same direction to get cars out, get them out on time, get them out with high quality, Make sure it's first time through quality. Those things are really important. Remember that you're trying to build a culture here, a culture of responsibility and time management. But it starts with the leader. The leader is the one that has to communicate and be an example for others so that others do the same thing. Repetitive use of this document will help in ensuring that it becomes a habit. So if you haven't seen these kinds of documents before, they're really good documents that you can use. The last one I think is, is the most important in working with a team, that's providing positive feedback. I wanna recognize those who use not only the documentation, but process compliance effectively. As we do that, we're, we're basically building the team, we're building the culture so it's a culture of commitment to the customer. That's really what we need. Um, and so we're, we're putting it in, uh, in words, we're putting it in documents, we're meeting and talking about it, and I'm asking for input from the team. That will get everybody organized and we'll get everybody on the same page. This will sound a little funny to you, but you gotta make it a ritual. And, and what we talk about here is ritualize things that are part of your culture. Take time to make role relevant task lists for both yourself and your team members. Make sure that you check off items as your role relevant tasks are completed. Stay focused on the task at hand. Think and act uh, strategically. That will help you in, in building a long-term goal and a long-term vision. Don't allow yourself to move away from that goal. Because if you do, and you go down that rabbit hole, or you go down that rabbit hole, you're not staying focused on your ultimate objective, whatever that might be, whether it's completion of the car, staying organized, making sure equipment and materials are right, whatever the goal is, stay focused on. It. Then manage your time through your, your management checklist. Again, consistent repeatable, and you've got to have discipline. That means as you set this, um, it's actually a goal checklist, if you, want, if you will. But as you set this up, you're checking it off to make sure that everything you basically specified that you need to do gets done. And we're doing it with our folks to make sure that they're doing the same. So with that, um, really good stuff for us to, to think about in, in uh, establishing teamwork and making sure that our teams work well. But at the same time, we're organizing ourselves 
and we're making sure that we can manage through the time on that organizational checklist that we built. So keep that in mind as you move forward. We're gonna have some more training like this. I think it's real important. But as we put this together, we wanna to share the vision with our team. We wanna organize ourselves and our team. We're gonna develop those consistent repeatable processes and execute doing the processing itself. Organize the workflow for yourself and your team, setting those expectations. We're gonna communicate uh, two things. We're gonna communicate effectively and we're gonna communicate often. That way there's, you know, as we're listening and folks are listening to us, we have established what the requirements are. We're gonna manage time using the management checklist. Take responsibility for decisions and results. Hey, if we didn't make it, we didn't make it, but why didn't we make it? Why do we need to rethink something that we're doing so that we can make sure that we make it the next time we're measuring? Then the last one, again, I, I kind of always reach back to recognize good performance. If you've got people that are doing well, let them know they're doing well. You know, give them the pat on the back. You know, if you can do something with uh, some other kind of performance metric, that's great. But let them know that they're doing a good job because the work we do is tough. The work we do is very finite. We've got very specific things that we've got to accomplish. Let's make sure we're recognizing the folks who do that well. With that being said, I want to thank you all for attending. Again, my name is Keith Manich. You can reach me at 301 575-9191 or at kmanage at autotraining.net. Um, we've got some other presentations coming up for third and fourth quarter. We really appreciate the time you all spend with us. Um, and if there's anything that um, we can do for you directly, or if there's training that you're looking for, please let me know at uh, either one of those contact points. And we'll be more than happy to spend some time working on uh, some other kinds of training for you as well. So with that being said, look forward to seeing you next time.